Hey guys, Richard back with Nexus Core. I'm going to be showing you my Gold Paladin Gurgit deck profile that I took with me to the Vanguard Regional Tournament at Grand Fest in Long Beach. So let's just get right into it. So starting off with our grade threes, running four copies of our main ride target, uh, Golden Holy Sword Gurgit. So I prefer this Gurgit over the original Gurgit as the main ride, so running four of it. Main reason is because he gets you an Indie Knight immediately with the stride skill and his GB2 is pretty nice since it doesn't cost any counter blast. So, skills unite, uh, all your rear guards can intercept and can intercept in the back row, and the stride skill is counter blast, soul blast. Uh, when you stride, you look at the top four, call a unit, and if the unit has unite, you look at the top card of your deck and call it as rest. So it gives you two units, which helps you uh, fill the field, can lead to deck out, but like if you're smart enough, you can not have that happen to you. So this deck is really, really weird, so bear with me on this. Uh, I ran two copies of uh, Salvation Lion Grand Ezel Scissors, Scissors because my expectation at Grand Fest was to play against some form of Link Joker deck, and I know uh, Ezel doesn't really do well against Messiah since he kind of helps Messiah, but at the uh, last regional I went to, uh, having Ezel did help me, so I figured why not at least have it. Um, I didn't want to max it up to three or four because, um, I don't know, I just didn't feel like doing it. I felt like... Uh, if I was going to see Ezo, it was just going to happen. I was just kind of messing... This was more like untested idea of just trying to Ezo see what happened. Uh, evidently, I didn't end up playing Link Joker in the regional event. So, yeah, but it was there. So, ideally, I'm probably going to put it back to the to, uh, original Gurgit, which I still had one copy of in the deck. Why I did, I just felt like it. I uh, figured that since some matchups are better with this Gurgit in the Vanguard Circle because uh, the the his GB2 skill, so basically if I'm playing against a deck that kills off my rear guard, I still need to be able to defend myself, my hand's low. So I put one in just so that I could at least have this as a possible ride target instead of doing the three Ezel. But uh, after this, I'm probably just going to put this back up to three and take out the Ezels completely. So yeah, on to the grade twos. Running three copies of Knight of Daylight Canaris. So, uh... Before I had Canaris at 3, but Canaris is actually pretty decent because uh, uh, Heavenly Law and Gurgit makes him pretty good. Also the fact that he's a counter blast, a counter blast less uh, call, meaning if I put him down, I, can, I don't have to use any resources other than my hand to uh, superior call. So yeah, his skill is if you uh, unite, if you have a Gurgit, uh, Vanguard gets plus 4k, and that skill isn't GB1, so it's good for early game. If you have a 7k boost, that's a 20k to a maybe a 9k Vanguard basically make force him to drop 15k shield which he might not want to his other skill is uh gb1 he has bloppier shooter skill when he's placed uh except not from deck when he's placed it from anywhere on the rear guard circle uh discard a card from your hand look at top three call a unit put the rest on the bottom of your deck so it's a on place get another call so it helps if you want to deck then get out more calls it's a pretty decent card i liked it so i'm gonna keep it Next up, we are running three copies of Holy Mage Puel because this card is great when you're sitting on Heavenly Law. So, uh, Puel's skill is, you know, he's the Amber Clone when he's boosted. When you attack your opponent's Vanguard, you look at top three, call something. So this is great because you can just go, like, it's good with, uh, what's his name? I'm blanking out here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I'm going to have to look it up real quick because I am that dumb. Oh, Glorious Raining Dragon. Cool. Sorry, I've been... Playing so much Buddy Fire, forgot how to play a Vanguard deck. Anyways, so yeah, uh, Poe works with uh, Glorious Raining Dragon because it gets you extra attacks after you call out your units from Glorious Raining. He's really good with Heavenly Law because uh, if you are if you stride into your Heavenly Law a second time, everything gets like plus 6 to 8k, depending if you're running uh, Radiant Sword or not. And then uh, just Superior Call something gets plus 6k. That's really dope. If you're sitting on Heavenly Law. So yeah, running three copies of Poe because you want to see it more often. Because extra attacks during battle phase is nice. So we need Unite units in this deck. So I'm running two copies of uh, Springs Light Paramour. So I'm still running Paramour because I like Paramour. It's just it's just personal preference. Paramour is also really decent because if I just need something in the same column as him, I can put him down. He only costs a Counter Blast, which is nice. He's Aglavel, but not as good. But he also has Unite. So early game pokes, I can put Scarface line behind him, swing for 15. Uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a really decent card. So I like running two of them. Uh, something else you can probably do is uh, if you're worried about like a Link Joker matchup or 
basically that. You can run um, Knight of Autumn's Light or something like that. Reagan, I believe that's the name of the card. It's, it ha it's a 12k beat stick with resist. So if you really don't want to run Paramore because of the skill, but you like the 11k poke, uh, you could run Autumn and have a resist unit so that your opponent can't retire or lock your stuff. But uh, I'm not really trying to make my deck too anti-Link Joker focused right now. So I'm just going to keep it as uh, fun and lean as I can. So I'm still running two copies of uh, Henriness because this is a really great call target during your battle phase. So like if you, if uh, let's see, you're on Glorious Reigning and you call out one, two, three units and this is one of them, you can get out a fourth unit and it gives power bonuses to both of them that you call. Uh, even though he does not have Unite, if I do see him in my top four from... Uh, Holy Sword Gurgit Stride skill. I don't really mind putting the extra Counter Blast and Soul Blast to get out an extra call. Just due to the fact that they're both that both of the cards are getting a power. So for the extra Counter Blast and Soul Blast, I am getting something out of it. Even if even if the additional call is not and the additional call isn't a rest to use it. So even if the additional call isn't free, basically, it, I still think it's worth to do it because I'm getting some kind of power up over it. And this deck also recycles its resources really well. Thanks to, Jer thanks to Jerry moving to Soul and unflipping everything. So uh, I still like to run Henry Knees because he's a really good battle phase target. And lastly, because this card is just way too adorable and ugly, and I love it, uh, two cards of Bullygull. Bullygull is just really great for me because what I like to do is when I see it with uh, my first, when I go in my first stride into Heavenly Law and I see it in my top four, I typically pick it as my target overall if it's the best situation because I know it's going to be at least a 16k poke because all my rear guards are going to get plus 2k and he gets plus 5 in his own. So it's it's just great that the fact it's just a free 5k. He's just giving a trigger to himself. And if you any of you guys who play this game long enough will know that an extra 5k can make a lot of difference. So uh, still running to cup is Buller Gold because he is really still helpful and I still haven't seen a need to take him out yet. Alright, on to the grade ones. Still running three copies of Jeffrey because moving to Soul and Draw. Next, we are still running three copies of Horsa because power ups and win condition and getting really big numbers. Uh, not running Horsa at four because I want to keep uh, Jerry at three. Not running Jerry at two because I, if I have to ride him, it sucks that I only have one left in the deck. So, um, yeah, I like it. The 3-3 three, three works out great for me. Uh, since we are only running seven grade threes, we are running four stride fodders for Gurgit. Uh, lets me search out for the other Gurgit if I wanted to ride that one instead. Uh, it's a stride fodder, you know. It has a shield, so instead of it being a grade three without a shield, this one has a shield. Uh, for my perfect guards, I decided to drop one Alicia and put in one Lavania. This was kind of my plan from the get-go, but I tested out the four Alicia to see if I liked it, but I really wanted to throw a Lavania back in. Uh, from my GBT08 deck profile with that focused around uh, Glorious Raining, I had three Bridery and one Lavania. Uh, I'm, I really like this a lot because what here's here's something really cool. You guys already know what this does. It's just P PG, uh, PG is the vanguard. Can be you can PG from the deck and it still works, which is phenomenal. And the other skill is if you place it down, you just put one of your rear guards and put it on the bottom of your deck, and you can it gains a 15k shield. So if you don't want to drop an additional card for a PG, you can just put this down, put one of your units back in the deck. Helps prevent deck out. And then it gets just basically becomes a G Guardian in a sense, just a vanilla G Guardian. All right, for Lavania, this is what's really great. Thank God Vanguard doesn't have timing, so you can take advantage of plays like this. So her skill is just the generic. If your Vanguard's if your Vanguard's being attacked, if it's placed from hand, PG. Uh, other skill is GB1 Unite when she's called to rear. So to be in Unite, you have to be in Unite for her effect to activate. So when she's placed. Uh, you pick one of your other regards, put it on the bottom of your deck, and at the end of your turn, you put it back in your hand. So here's something that's really cool you can do. So let's say you're on Gurgit. You stride, right? And you look at your top four, wherever your top four is, and you see Lavania. It's called Lavania, right? And then, you still have to finish Gurgit's Unite skill. So you look at the top card of your deck, call it as rest, right? Unite is active. So now that you are in Unite, all your standby effects that happen when you call stuff are now active. Lavania's skill now activates because she has been placed 
Gurgit's skill has resolved, and now you can resolve the remaining effects. So because Lavania is still being placed and her effect still needs to be resolved after finishing Gurgit's skill, you know, activate her effect because you are in the United State. So her skill, put it back, put the rest of you back at the end of the turn, you get it back. So if you can, if you look at the top four, you see Lavania, you call her, look at Gurgit's top card of Gurgit, call it. Now the reason this works is because you can't just say like, oh, well, Lavania was in Unite when she was placed. Well, you can't interrupt Gurgit's skill. You have to finish Gurgit's skill. And when you finish Gurgit's skill, she's in Unite because you called two things. So when she's placed and now, and you're in the, because her effect activates after Gurgit finishes. And because you become in Unite after Gurgit finishes, her effect then activates because you're in Unite. So cool shenanigans you can do. Lavania is really great if you can do that. I'm actually thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about dropping an Alicia and putting in another Lavania. If you guys uh, follow this Facebook page called Ezel Senpai, yeah, there's a Facebook page called Ezel Senpai. Check him out. Uh, he for he showed uh, some pictures of his deck list. He did two Alicia, two Lavania, and I really want to do that because even though his deck was Ezel focused, I know I can take more advantage of Lavania with Gurgit Stride skill, and that seems like something really fun. I'm gonna test it out, see if I like it. If I don't, I'm just gonna keep this uh, PG lineup because I really like it. All right, talk so much about the PGs, forgot to go into the grade zeros. Let's do that now. Starters, Coel, because uh, deck thinning is nice, and also free unit gets plus 2k. Really, really great starter. Four copies of Scarface Lion, because Heart Thump Clone draws and Soul, and Soul is a resource. Uh, two copies of Flame of Victory. Uh, something that's, uh, this card, A, yeah, it's just there. You can move to Soul to give stuff 3k. Typically, I don't do that because I want to keep my hand. Uh, something I might want to try out is putting in the, uh, is putting in, uh, what's it called? Ascending Liberator uh, Barb Truck. Reason I want to put in Ascending Liberator Barb Truck is even though this deck runs literally zero bluish flame music, is because Barb Truck skill is when she's called from the deck, you put her back and then look at top four for bluish flame. Well, it's just look for up to one bluish flame. So the main point is calling out Barb Truck, and then being able to put it back. So if I call it out from the stride skill as rest, I can go, oh, Barb Truck will just go back in my deck, so it's another trigger back in my deck. Um, other thing is, like, if I use Glorious Raining and I call it a bunch of cards, and let's say I can call it to four cards, I call one, two, three, and then four being Barb Truck. Horsa boosts a ton, and then Barb Truck goes back in the deck, so I can still have crits, and then basically it stacks Horsa. So because I don't use Flame of Victory that often, and because the ability to call a card and get off Unite abilities and then put it back in my deck just to have a trigger back in my deck is pretty nice. But for consistency and being able to at least use abilities, like call it move to soul, give something 3k, the 3k might make a difference. It's up to you, it's preference. I'm just testing out new things. All right, so since I run six crit, we're gonna be running six stands, four of which have to be our only unflip engine in this entire deck. Uh, this deck, does counterblast a bit, but if you see a Jerry, it doesn't make that big a deal. Also, the fact that we have a uh, Heavenly Law to just call out something for free with the one counterblast. We also have a uh, Stride Skill giving us free units, so yeah, man, it works out. We have Glorious Raining unflip stuff too, so works out. Uh, before I had um, just one stand, now I'm doing two. Uh, from instead of doing five stands, I didn't know doing six now. Just do the fact that the new G Guardian that came out for Fires Collection 2017 makes Gigantic Ringer just really, really great. Uh, because it the G Guardian lets you call stuff from your deck to your Guardian Circle, and if the guard is successful, you call it to your rear guard. So if this is in your choices from the G Guardian to put in the guard circle, after the guard is successful, hopefully, you call it to rear, and that means the next turn you can set up Gigantic Ringer and get pluses off that. So it's a good card, why not? I even had, I had a regional, I had an event, I don't gonna talk too much about it, but my opponent uh, didn't know that if Gigantic Ringer is called out from Glorious Ring skill, you could still proc. Uh, the, you could still proc both of these and maybe pick the other two units and give them both 5k and put them back in and get two draws. So that was really helpful because I had like zero cards in my hand, and then I called out a bunch of stuff and there were two Gigantic Ringers, I put them back in my deck and I got an additional two cards. So that was pretty helpful. So And also because Heavenly Log makes your all your rear guards really big, uh, having stand triggers to make those columns uh, re-stand big numbers is helpful too. So yeah, and then finally running the new, kind of new heal trigger. It's Elixir Liberator, but instead it's Elixia Liberator. 
Uh, she's adorable. Uh, her skill is really, really helpful, too. So she unflips, kind of, but she costs a soul blast, too. Uh, it's whenever you guard with the new G Guardian. If you have one or less face-up cards in your damage zone, you soul blast one and unflip. So because timing's not a thing, if you have, like... If you have one face up, you can use this first to unflip. So you have two face up, then counter blast for the G guard, and then, or you can, uh, you know, if you have none face up, use this to get an unflip to use the G guard skill. So yeah, really nice. Thank God there's no timing. All right, we went through our triggers. Now let's go into. Oops, that fell. Let's go into the G units. Bring four copies of Heavenly Logger because this card is really great. Uh, it's your first tried stride, gets you in GB2 right away, sets you up for Glorious Reigning, and uh, just an, it can be your finisher, and it's really good as your second or third stride. Um, I love this card, generally, because you c even though it costs a discard, it, the fact that you can call a brand new unit out and get another attack and then put triggers on it afterwards is really nice. Um... I also love the fact that it gets plus 2k for each face up, so just the more you use it, the more it sets up later. So, yeah, I'm, I love this card. Really, really great card. Uh, something that I'm doing, just because I have to run the Ezels, I wanted to run the Ezel G unit, so I'm running two copies of Glorious Reigning Dragon. The other reason I'm only keeping Glorious Reigning at two is even if I wasn't running Ezel, I'd probably still be running this at two. I know Glorious Reigning is just a phenomenal card, but I also feel like, uh, I'm running the GB8, so instead of using Glorious Reigning as my push, I can just use the GB8, because the GB8 is actually really fun to use, and that's just a deck I want to play around with. So what I usually do is go into Heavenly Law, go into this second, so I can conserve hand, and then go into Heavenly Law the third time, and if they're not dead by then, go into the GB8 from G-guarding a bunch after using my G-guards. So that's basically the plan, but this this has been working out fine for me, using with the two Glorious Reigning. Uh... Next, because we ran Ezel Scissors, I ran two copies of uh, Mithril Ezel. So basically, it unlocks stuff, gets you a call. If I have to ride Ezel, it's a good first stride target because I can at least still go into Glorious Reigning afterwards because I'll have two face-up G, G units. Um, it's mostly there for the counter against Chaos Breaker. If my opponent's ringing Freeze Ray Messiahs at the right Freeze Ray, makes it easier for me to unlock stuff. Uh... I guess if I go against Messiahs and Flagellate, Omega locks my stuff. This is nice, too. It's it's literally just the Link Joker matchup. So if I'm not really caring about the Link Joker matchup and just want to deal with it, not really care, or play his deck for fun with the, with, uh, the other guys, uh, I typically won't be running Ezel. But because this was a regional event, and I thought maybe Link Joker might show up, and it would suck if the one thing I could counter by is because I didn't run Ezel, which my clan just so happens to have a counter to Link Joker. So I was just throwing it in there. Next up for my genius, we're going to our one ofs. One of Scourge Point. Real quick thing about right now, I'm not running Radiant Sword in my G zone because every time when I was playing with this deck for like the past month, I never went into it. The reason I'm running Scourge Point is because there have been times where I'll be really far behind and my hand is pretty low, and going into Heavenly Law, my first stride is not really the best option. Whereas going into Scourge Point first, as my first stride has been really helpful because the minute you stride, you get Gurgit Stride, uh, Holy Sword Gurgit Stride skill where you uh, call a unit, get plus five to Scourge, Unite skill, or because if the unit has Unite, sorry, you look at top card, call it as rest, that means this gets another plus five. Koa's skill, because now you're Unite, Mutasil, call another unit. That's basically, just for using the Stride skill and Koa's skill, you just got three units, and Scourge Wayne just got 15, 15k plus. So I like that better, because also later in the game, that's Radiant Sword only works more later in the game, and if I don't have the resources set up for it, I can't really use it. Also... Heavenly Law basically can make the exact same numbers by the third stride because if I use Radiant Sword skill once, it gives everything plus five, whereas Heavenly Law gives everything plus six if I use it by my second stride. And also, even even though I know uh, Radiant Sword gives himself like a bunch of power, like plus 25k, Scourge Point is still getting a big Vanguard power boost by calling stuff as well. So, in a sense, I wanted to use this to, because it was more consistent where I could use it first stride or mid-game anytime I wanted to. And we are running the GB8 because this card's really fun. The skill is Generation Break 8. Uh, when he's in Unite, that's it. He doesn't have a Counter Blast or any cost. It's just Unite. Uh, after he When he attacks, I pick up the four of my rear guards and they all get skills. The red attack skill being after it attacks, after they attack or boost, so the top two cards, call it, gets plus 5k. 
So this, with a bunch of horse columns, is just like you're swinging for like eight attacks for the turn, which is really nice. So it's gonna it's gonna be like the game ender, for sure. Like this this card is it's not like an amazing card. Of course, you can have a more consistent build if you feel that the GB8 decks you out or something. This card is basically you put it down. If you don't win, you lost the game. And why not? This game's about RNG and fun, anyways, right? Uh, one copy of Breeze because we got to take advantage of people who, who are grade locked because sucks for them. And then on to our G Guardians. So uh, I am running three copies of Slamy Flare and two copies of the new G Guardian. Reason I'm doing this is because I want to get to GB8. It's that simple. I really want to get to GB8. That's what I want to do. <laughs> it's really fun. So typically what I do is my first, uh, if I'm in GB1, my first G Guard will be this. Uh, the reason I love this card is because it just makes, I don't need to have screw you anymore. Because my main issue is that the other, all my G Guardians required a field, whereas this one doesn't. If anything, this thing g gives me a field. So her skill is when, uh, when, I, when you guard with her, generation break one, flip over a G in it. So I flip over a Slamy Flare. Uh, look at the top two cards, call it to, to the guard circle. If the guard is successful, I pick the card that I called with its skill and call it to my rear guard circle. So I can use that card for intercepts with uh, Generation Break 2, or I could keep it there for the next turn set up for plays. It, that's why it makes Gigantic Ringer good, because if I call it Gigantic Ringer with the skill, I can use Gigantic Ringer's skill the next turn, get a draw off of it, put a trigger back in my deck. Uh, overall, yeah, it's a pretty great card. Uh, so I like to do, what I basically do is just this once, flip, Slimmy Flare the second time, so then I have three face up, and because rulings is a thing, is as long as I have three face up, I can still call the fourth one and then flip it with skill. So that means I'll, I already have five face up G units, making it like where I can get the GB8 faster. Uh, I'm running three Slimy Flares because I don't want to run another G Guardian that I might flip. Like I might run Dismal and then be like, oh, I'll flip Dismal, I'm not going to need Dismal. And then later I'm like, oh, I need a Dismal. Oh, I wish that I... Or like, oh, maybe I'll flip Slamy Flare because I might need Dismal later and then I make the bad choice big. Wow, I should have had another Slamy Flare. Just so I don't really mess with myself because I'm not that smart. Uh, I'm just keeping the three Slamy Flare so I know for a fact that all my flip targets will be Slamy Flare. And that Slamy Flare is still a, a 41 shield, typically. Most, li most likely it's going to be like a total of 41 shield against any attack. So, really good card. I'm liking my setup with that. So... Yeah, this deck is really weird. Uh, I'm going to be making a lot of changes after that Grand Fest. And yeah, yeah, feel free to criticize my deck. Feel free to do whatever you want. Uh, you know, I'm not your mom, so, you know, have fun. Life's great. Uh, yeah, uh, have fun playing your own gold powder and really fun build. And yeah, man, enjoy life. And I'll see you around. <laughs>